It's so good. <laughs> Are you ready? What? <laughs> well hello happy tuesday a half hour early and you're all kind of with us hopping it's on so weird, thank you yeah now for us to get the kids down that yeah. quick <laughs> and especially to for rush you. over here we must have very special guests that it's a very good so point. um we do well worth the half hour bump not just for us but for all of you because tonight's yes. gonna be a lot of fun we do have special guests from Lost Rancher here returning to Glam and Dram, which is great. And we also got to do a very special kind of mm. private tasting with them about a week ago where we got to taste through all oh, this. Man. So we're bringing this to you for the first time, and that'll be dropping tomorrow. So we're going to get into all things Lost Lantern tonight. Mm -hmm. um, um, but anything else, any housekeeping news, anything you want well, you know, to we, talk we, about? Everybody knows we live in the Baltimore area, yes. and we've gotten a lot of text messages and emails asking if everything's okay. I'm sure everybody saw the horrible news of the Key Bridge yeah. in Baltimore being hit by a cargo ship and then collapsing this morning, which is almost unreal to, to, to watch. We have dri literally, we live five miles from that bridge. Yeah. I think you probably drove over it the I, other day. I actually, well, the other we day. We drive was, over Yeah. I took my son to school yeah. for a year and a half back and Going forth over that, that bridge. bridge. It's yes. just it's just kind of surreal to wake up and and it's I gone. It's an iconic like, yeah. thing, and uh, it's really uh, yeah, it's it's tragic and all those things. It's going to cause a lot of issues with commerce and travel in this area for a while. But we're okay. Keep praying for those that you know there were people that lost their lives, and luckily they shut down traffic yeah. before. And it wasn't like the middle of the day. God forbid that thirty thousand people cross that bridge a day. It's just uh, amazing. Average, I can't. So. I still can't. It almost like it's out of a movie. But it we're was, okay. And thank you for the uh, well yeah. wishes and keep praying for those people. It is ironic how fast news spreads and everything, and quickly people are calling to wish you well. Um, still, Austin called today uh, just to say, "Hey, were you? Yeah. Were everything good?" In Baltimore I was like, "Yeah, everything's good." But it was, it was cool that they were they were kind enough to reach out. So thank you, Peter. Yeah. Um, yes. And, you yeah. know. It's we literally if we get on the beltway and three exits down is the key bridge from us. Yeah. So it's literally five miles from where we are, and you can see it on some days from where we live very easily. And it's gone now. It's it's a surreal thing. I, I can't believe that happened. And yeah, just keep praying and hopefully uh you know you rebuild, I guess. Yeah, it's it's kind of crazy. Hard to put into, I can't believe the words things like that because it's just you don't it's not something you wake up and expect yeah one of the bridges that we no. cross ever for 47 years is gone but yeah um thank you Corey. appreciate that but, but you know, better a, news a lot of well wishes <laughs> yes appreciate that um i did go to what you go to a game this weekend my oh, daughter yeah. and i went yeah, and saw, saw a hockey game again did lost this time. they lost this time yes. so we're one and one but that was fun darn it um and then we're both going to be down the beach this weekend are we not we are. Yes, I'm excited about that. So for Easter weekend, going to the beach, my parents have a place, of course, and you're taking family. And Maybe we'll go have some uh, drinks uh, with we the family. We may do that. We may do that. So that, that, yeah. um, Patreon, stay tuned. You might get, might get pictures from me. <laughs> you you put pictures up? I do. I do. I do. I do. I do. <laughs> if there's ever a reason to be on Patreon, 365 days of this face that you get new Can't, pictures. It's, yeah. Can't beat that. Yeah, Anthony's lo local. Yeah, exactly. It's, it's part of the like what Baltimore is, I, again, I don't want to dwell too much on it and bring everybody down, but no, it, it was for the it's fabric crazy. Of it just, it's one of the things. I is. can't believe that went down like that. And I got the, like you said, I got the text from my friends when I woke up at six 30 and I key bridge gone. I'm like, what? Yeah. And you go to, you know, X or Twitter, whatever you want to call it. And you see, I'm like, I just can't believe I just saw that. So yeah, it's definitely, right. definitely on to surreal, better so. things. Let's get into our wonderful guest, Andrew. We can do that. I mean, I have something planned for them too. Which do they, you really? Have nothing, no idea about, which is part of my life. Guys, we're here but. to, basically go through uh, you know lost lanterns does I, I think a spring and fall I, do, they might do multiple i know these collections throughout the year this is their spring collection well, we have the right people to ask yeah so. and it's their it's their midwest collection which is super exciting for all you out there that know these midwest distilleries so so well without further ado yeah. the first time we had them on uh it went really well everyone was excited uh 
uh, to learn more about Los Angeles, asked to have them back. We were kind enough or lucky enough to get them to come back. Oh, there's uh, from, yeah. yeah, my my thank brother's uh, Miss Marsha. I know, it's terrible. Yeah, so thank you for the warm wishes. But let's walk, and they're in Indiana. We'll be talking a little bit about Indiana tonight, yeah. will we not? Yes. Amongst other Midwestern states. But let's bring back Adam and Nora from Lost Lantern. Yeah. Yeah. Welcome. Welcome, guys. Hello. Hey. Thanks for having us back. <laughs> How was that for your official ADD welcome? Because we were all over the place. So, we, so <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> welcome back, guys. We have, we are excited to have you on tonight. Very much so. Thank you, and our condolences for the for the tragedy. Oh. And we've been there. It was crazy Unbelievable, to watch right? that from afar, it, and really it must be really <laughs> scary being there. It, it is. It's it. You see those in, that in movies, right? You never think it actually happens, and then it happens in like literally your backyard, and it's just it's tragic, you know. And you, you hope that. You know, you can recover from things like this and not to luck. If there's one good thing, it was at one thirty in the morning and not one thirty in the yeah. afternoon. So that's the only thing I guess you can say. And they were lucky enough to stop traffic before it hit. And that, you know, certainly mitigated loss of life. So I had to right. explain to my, <laughs> yeah, my little that was girl. Tough conversation, wasn't it? Not only that, but tomorrow I leave for a trip and I'm going across the Bay Bridge. Yeah. It's just like, no, I was yeah. like, it's going to be fine. Yes. Yeah. It's, it's going to be yeah, a my Go across the Bay Bridge. Yeah, now. so it's um, yeah. it changes things. Anyway, on a lighter note, uh, we're super excited to go through this spring collection. I'm, I'm sure you guys are as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and a timely conversation since it all releases tomorrow. So this is going to be great. It's almost like we planned that, you know. <laughs> so, <laughs> well, um, we know you guys have been on before. We've we've promoted Los Santon a lot. We we love everything you're doing, but. But we uh, we grow every week. We always mm -hmm. have new people on. So for those who don't know who you are, would you mind just giving them a little bit of an overview about Lost Lantern? Yeah, you want me? Okay. <laughs> My turn this time. So um, <laughs> Lost Lantern is an independent bottler in the Scottish tradition, which means that we buy whiskey from distilleries all over the country. And we either highlight one distillery through a unique single cask or small blend of multiple casts from one distillery, or we blend things together for multiple distilleries to highlight a region, like we'll talk about tonight, a flavor profile, or some other interesting thing that we've been noticing across the landscape of American whiskey. And it's worth noting that everything we put out is fully transparent on where it comes from. We always say the distillery name on the front and back label. We see ourselves as curators and blenders. It's very cool. So I love that. I've always loved that. And I, you know, I know it. it uh, yeah. Sorry, got delayed Let's there. Let's pull us uh, back up. Sorry. Sorry. Yeah. No, no worries. I, I love that you guys do that. That's the coolest thing. And I know we talked to David uh, Souza out in Corbin Cash, who had never heard of that sort of, uh, you know, idea of putting the labels on when you're sourcing it like that. And he thinks it's the coolest thing. And you know that that's uh, I think something that no one else does that you guys do, which I. I think is really cool. But I also love that you guys are blending now too. I think that's super exciting as well. Yeah, it's always been part of the plan, but it took us a while really until we had our own space. We, have, we now have a production space. We're in our yeah. tasting room um, and having those, really the production space where we're doing all of the blending and bottling in house, that's when we've been able to really start blending fully. Very well, cool. and we uh, will spotlight, I guess, first will be one of the ones that or we're going to spotlight, which showcases that blending. Yeah. And it was one of the standouts of a exceptional lot um, from the Midwest. But let me ask you this. There you go. For, our, for our viewers. <laughs> is, oh, yeah, you're doing a little bit there, Adam. Um, <laughs> so what inspired you to want to do a collection dedicated to the Midwestern states and maybe some distilleries that some folks haven't heard of before. What kind of brought that on and kind of triggered that interest for you? Yeah, well, I, I should say, first of all, that we are not Midwesterners. We are not based in the Midwest. We're from <laughs> Vermont, which is very definitively part of New England and not the Midwest. So this is really, it's us shining a light on a part of the country that we think is making incredible whiskey, a part of the country that we are not from. Um, but in our travels around the country, we keep going back to the Midwest as a place that is making really unique and interesting whiskey that we think is somewhat underappreciated. Um, a lot of places that people don't know, or even if they do know it, they can't necessarily get it outside of the region. So this was a way for us to, to highlight a few of the distilleries um, from that region, from different states, talk about some of the others, and hopefully get people really excited about what's going on in the Midwest, which is a, a pretty big part of the country, but tends to be less 
loud and boisterous and talking about themselves and what they're doing. And it's, it's an area, though, that we think needs more people to be paying attention because there's really unique and special whiskey coming out of there that a lot of people don't get access to. So our, this is, I, I can't remember if you said that this is our first regional yeah. collection. Yeah. Um, and we're pushing people a little bit to try to step outside of what they normally think of and um, explore the Midwest and hopefully fall in love with the flavor profile. And that's where Far Flung Rye really comes in is it's a blend of five whiskey from five distilleries that we put together in house in Vermont. Um, and that was intended, the goal of this was to highlight the things that are characteristic of the Midwest. There are a couple of things that we think are consistent across the distilleries in a cooler climate. And the goal with Far Flung Wrong, and I'm not going to tell you what those are because I don't want to influence your experience of tasting mm -hmm. as you're going, but the, the, the point for Far From Rye is to highlight those things. Yeah. And, and, so I, let me, one thing that you mentioned though, this is your first sort of regional collection. That means there'll be more regional collections, which I love. So let's get them to the mid Atlantic area and let's get in on this. We can, we can help you with that a little <laughs> right? bit. I we think that's a good thing here. All right. So let's talk about Far Flung. Again, you mentioned it. It's got, uh, you know, the blend um, anywhere from four to, I think you said, what was the age ranges on these, the, the blend four of, of the barrel? Four to nine. Yeah. Coming at 1.6 proof. MRSRP is 100 bucks. Uh, I, I did a couple of reviews of this, and I know a couple people out there. I think it might be Anthony who's in the, who's just super chatted us. This is the one he had the first far flung, which was a bourbon. We didn't, I didn't ever try that. Super love that. And uh, I'm a rye guy, and I love this. I will say though, I ranked this, and this is my fourth out of seven. Of you know, so I I had three other ones I like better than this, which it's a good thing. I'm not, yeah, it's a good thing. I love. Listen, I love them all actually. The great thing about this one, you know, it's to me, you know, it's a rye right away, but it, it drink. I mean, Andy, are you gonna drink it? <sighs> I'm multitasking. You yes, are. I am. I am. I am gonna drink. Mm. So I get, you know, it's really bright on nose. Dry spice comes through. Todd doesn't cheers. He just gets right into I it. I just Adam, get into I, it. Man. I appreciate. <laughs> no, you guys. sorry, Adam. He, he struggles with that. He gets. <laughs> don't, don't, don't worry, man. I tell you what, gotta hone him in. Dark chocolate. I get spicy cinnamon sugar. It's got that cinnamon sugar sweetness to it. It's super viscous and creamy. I mean, for a 121, it it, it actually, I think, drinks a little bit under it. I mean, there's a long finish on it, but it's super viscous. Certainly not hot at all. Uh, spicy finish. I, I love everything. There's nothing I don't love about this. And I can see why people love, I wish we'd had the bourbon, but uh, if you if you love the far-flung bourbon, I assume this, if you like rye, this is going to be right up your alley. Yeah. Um, Midwest is... I mean, it's known for, mm. for grains, for wheat, for corn, for, you know, really. So I think it's fun that the, the terroir of these distilleries in these local right. states kind of gets to shine a little bit on this. And this is kind of bringing it all together. So before we continue, because I absolutely love this and we'll dive into wow, it more. so good. Can you spotlight for us the distilleries that we're going to be tasting from in the states that we're going to be tasting from for our mm. viewers right now? Yeah. The so, states. Uh, yeah, states. For the... The single casts, uh, we are going to be tasting whiskeys from uh, Indiana, Ohio, um, Wisconsin, Illinois, uh, and Iowa. Did I miss any of them? I don't think so. Iowa. Um, from I think it's just five. Right? five states. Yeah. yeah. Um, and of which five of those distilleries are also in the far flung rye from their rye. So um, the only one not. Here. Yeah. yeah. Okay. That's it. Got it. That's so cool. That is so cool. I love Which that. Which is not, so, we didn't set out to do that, to do all of those. We we oh. just happened to, so we took the best version of a Midwest rye that we could make with most of what we had. Mm. We actually had to last minute, as, as we talked about um, last time when we tasted, mm. we had to call in a Cedar Ridge malted rye barrel because we couldn't get the creamy mouthfeel that we wanted oh. for the blend. So you got it. And I mean, from, it, it works. Yeah. It works. so will you, when you, so the next time we do a regional spotlight or a collection, will you again do a sort of blend of some of those that are in that spotlight? Like is far flung going to be that for moving on a collection of what you're doing for that collection, so to speak, or no, not necessarily. It will often in some way reflect what we're doing with the collection. Like when we did our summer of okay. bourbon, last year of great bourbon coming from all across the country that 
Far Flung Bourbon was not regional. It had whiskey from yeah. uh, okay. Ohio, Colorado, Texas, and Nevada. This one is regional and it's part of the Midwest collection. So okay. every one of them will be slightly different, a different mix of distilleries, a different angle on the whiskey world. Yeah. And it's not always all the distilleries that are highlighted. Right. It'll it'll be consistent with whatever the theme is, but it won't always be a blend. This just happened to, to work it's this way where it was out. only those. I may have I, misdone my ranking here, but I'm, I was going to say I, this. This was a little <laughs> higher than four my for ranking. me. I love this one, and I do Dude, think this is that good. wow. If you are looking to get one that mm. showcases everything on one shot, this is a fantastic. It's a beautiful rye to ah. the the Midwest. So yeah, and now with my so job viscous. bring me to all oh. parts of the Midwest. It's kind of fun to go out there and kind of just say, hey, this you know, there's some really good stuff here because when I was Driving through Iowa or you know Illinois, Indiana, like you're not thinking whiskey. You know, it's not the first thing that comes to your head. Corn and well, corn, yeah. So maybe corn whiskey, but um, this this will open your eyes. And, and actually, I, I think that's what you do in general. There's a yeah. lot of distilleries that you're introducing people to for the first time, um, or that you're reintroducing them to with some amazing barrels. You're like, I didn't realize they put out things that were that amazing or that unique. And that's what I like is. A, your palates are, are awesome and they jive with each other, which is great because it probably wouldn't work if it didn't. Yeah. And um, you have an exceptional ability to pick honey barrels because everyone wants to think they can do it. Not everyone can. And so that's why I, I fell in love very early with Lost Lantern and became a fanboy early on a couple of years ago and have been getting yeah, you did before me. way too you, much you, stuff. That my wife is like, do, <laughs> why do all these bottles say the same things? Like they're all different, honey. I swear they're all different. Um, <laughs> they don't look different. But honestly, it's a great way to learn about some distilleries you may not have heard about, or give a second chance to some that you may have thought, hey, maybe that was, maybe that just wasn't the bottle for me. But this could be something that I want to get into. So, um, and if anyone out there can put up all their information, like Lost Lanterns, mm -hmm. please do because they are worth going and checking. Because they have some other stuff too, not just the Midwest collection. That if you scour their website, not much is left. Oh. Well, you'll find something somewhere that will tickle your fans. All right, trust. Well, let's get into right. the next one. So no, we no, did no, far no, wait, you're going oh. too fast. So oh, you have something. I do. Oh, guys, okay. get ready. He's gonna he's gonna do something. I am gonna do something. Um so last time, you know, we do we spotlight music and stuff like that. But um this time in between each whiskey tasting, I want to quiz you guys on how well you know the Midwest. Mm -mm. Oh. Okay. Oh boy. You're, oh, you're, boy. You're, you're both going to answer separately, <laughs> and we will keep score and see who has the most right. at the end. All either right. Adam. Who's going to win? If it's any kind of trivia. <laughs> All right. We'll just see. These, if they get them let's just say these questions aren't your normal questions. Uh -oh. so, um, <laughs> Here we go, Annie. So let me pull I this knew you'd up. make it interesting. I had to do something just to keep it fun and exciting. And everyone right. out there can play along oh, too. Oh, let's see who can win in the in the in the chat. Uh, That'll be fun too. Yeah, I think you guys will like this. So <laughs> yeah, you can help. You can phone a friend. You can ask the chat. <laughs> let me pull this up here. There you go. Thank you, Sugar Kitty. Okay, and slideshow from beginning. All right, Andrew. Okay. Can you pull that up no, on yours? It's a, no. no, no, right there. Just, oh, I can't. There you go, it. buddy. You can help me out, little fellow. <laughs> I can't see it. Because I can't see it here. Now, there we go. All right. Oh, no. Do you Midwest? Oh, my God. So I've not seen this guy, so this is all. We'll do him. one <laughs> question at a time, um, and we'll then we'll go to the, the next one. Um, cheating, no Googling. Here is your first question. Oh. It is going to be one of the states that the distillery is lying. Oh. So you can either pick Indiana, Iowa, Ohio. Nope. See if I get them all. Illinois. Illinois or Wisconsin. Yep. Okay. So there you can go. pick one of those five. Um, when you give your answer, then I'll show you the answer to see who gets the most points. Here's the first one. Okay. Even though we're landlocked, we've got our own island. Cibola is located in the Midwest and home to about 560 people, making it a wonderful place to plan a vacation. What? Which state <laughs> am I in? What? Does anyone out there know? Well, I'm just Cibula. saying. Mm -hmm. I have never heard of that. And they're landlocked. Even though we're landlocked, we've got our own island. island. Mm -hmm. I'm going to guess. City. I'm going to guess Iowa for this Damn. one, but I'm guessing. <laughs> That's also uh -huh. what I was going to say because it can't be. Because well, it's landlocked. But I don't know yeah. if the state oh. or the whole. Or well, like, well, should you I? Go, Todd, you want to play too? Well, the chat. So, so just one guy said I would. Yeah. No, they chat. Stop, stop typing. No, we want them to. 
Well, it's I fun. guess I can. <laughs> Stop it. <laughs> it's not fun. All right. Let I, me think, I think you guys would be on. All right. So the answer is they both said Iowa and New York. Oh, right. wow. So, Iowa. so there you go. So, you, look at that. They start off. This is how I make sure I don't lose, I guess. I get, Next time I have to go first because otherwise I'll just copy. Wait, so <laughs> what does the Iowa flag say? Our liberties we prize and our rights we will maintain. That's hard to read on and harder to That's read. Away from I was gonna, I was gonna <laughs> quiz you on the flags, and they all have bloody writing on them. I was like, it just gets yes. away. One says Wisconsin, one says I was like, we can't do that. No. Yes, I asked them to play. The chat can play. I would, I'm just kidding, chat. Relax. No, yes. don't, don't get all the play. Don't get all Finish you your, play. Uh, your verse. All right. So I'll pull it back down. We're going to get to the down. next whiskey. We all have right. another question after our next whiskey. So well, very what, good. What should we go to next, guys? We had that wonderful far-flung rye blend from five of the six distilleries. What next? The Wollersheim. <gasps> oh, I'm excited. Oh, uh, you went right for it. So this is interesting. Uh, when you announce this... Just the, the Wollerheim. Am I saying Wooler? You don't say the sh sh s, right? It's really Wollerheim. You, 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 you say the s, but you don't make a sh. So it's Wollersheim. Ah, oh, Wollersheim. Huh? Very German of me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so sorry. I don't know. It sounds German. <laughs> Wollersheim. I don't have to doesn't look Jewish. There we go. Anyway. Uh, yeah. So I never heard of the distillery uh, when you're in there, and we tried this last week. Mm -hmm. I love this. And I want to find out more about this. Tell us a little bit about Wollersheim and how did you guys find them? I mean, for somebody of these, we drink a lot of whiskey. Andy, we had never had it or even heard of it before. And especially since there's a winery attached to it. That's so true. I got all excited Andy about both. Excited. Now, that's more bang for your buck, a winery and a distillery. So that's Has awesome. anybody in the chat ever had Wollersheim? Uh, yes or no? Let's hear it. So tell us a little about the, the how you guys found them and sort of what they're about. Yeah, there you go, Adam. Yeah, so um, we first found them when we were on our uh, the second leg of our Great Whiskey Road Trip, which we took uh, when we were first starting the company mm -hmm. in 2018 and 2019. We had spent eight months on the road, burned out on being on the road after eight months, took a couple of months off, then spent another two months driving around the Midwest. And that was when we got to, to Wallersheim. I was researching all the Wisconsin distilleries that had basically that existed and reading about which ones sounded like they were doing interesting things, had a serious whiskey program, or really committed to it. And I saw, well, this place has been around as a winery on and off for 150 years. Seems like there's uh, a lot going on there. They have been distilling for seven or eight years at that point, which means it's like 15 years now um, and was worth checking out. So we we visited them there, reached out to them, set up a meeting up with the distiller and saw that it's a it's quite a substantial winery. I, I don't know if it's the biggest in Wisconsin, but it is uh, certainly pretty big. I think they might have been the biggest in mm. Wisconsin. Yeah, I wouldn't know. Um, and they got their start in distillation. All right, so in, you have in brand. Mm, that's awesome. And um, mm. one of the bigger proofs, one of the heavier proofs too, of the lot from the Midwest collection. One thirty-one point two proof, which is coming. Yeah, two hundred bottles, aged five years, MSRP around ninety dollars. And I am all in on this one, guys. Tomorrow, I'm getting this one. Uh, one because I've never had a bottle from Mullersheim, and and. And I love it. So, you know, for me on the nose, it's very fruit forward. And I love that about this this whiskey. And then you get into it and it just, again, I get like a strawberry cream. Let me drink it again. These are my notes for last time. Let me see if it's changed. Todd said cheers, guys. Mm. He's, 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 he's excited to cheers for you. <laughs> oh, woof. I get like some tobacco in that too. Some like a chocolate cream, like dark chocolate, which is really weird. And, and then also that fruit up front. But the finish is like a chocolate cream pie. It's super, again viscous and that tobacco comes in what do you get and i love everything about this it's the finish is so long at 131.2 give me a minute on this yeah exactly exactly what do you guys think about it? i mean you i never this is the first i've ever had from them and i'm blown away how good this is i, I love how i feel like you can taste a little bit yeah, yeah there, I feel like you can taste a little bit of the terroir on this one. Like oh. I know that sounds kind of crazy, but there's some there's some mm. like some grain notes on here that I'm loving that kind of pull through on this, which I think is mm. it doesn't detract; it adds nope. to it. Sometimes you feel like sometimes like the tobacco that's in there, yeah, and that sort of it can like a, it can feel young like and coffee. maybe grassy, and this one doesn't. This no. one feels like you're tasting part no. of like, like the Just where you are, up. but it's it's also got some really nice burnt like sugar notes, and I just think this this is oh. all on real balanced. Bourbon is really, really, really good. good. Rye. There you go. Oh, all right. Yeah. Uh, to me, if you think Wisconsin rye, I think Drisk. Dris yeah. So I agree. This isn't a rye. This is a bourbon. But Willertime, I'm telling you guys, if you've never even heard of it, 
and are apprehensive. I think that's the great thing about what you guys do in these collections is expose people. I would have never picked this up. Never. But you guys were in on it, and that may be us interested, and we tried a sample of it, and now I'm, I'm, I'm buying this tomorrow for sure. Well, I also <laughs> I think this is one of the things, if, um, if people start to fall in love with the things that you do, mm. they kind of can expect that whatever you pick out is probably going to jive mm. with their palate, which is what I like. And that's what I found out about Lost Lantern. Like, yeah, almost anything they put out, I'm God. really enjoying. Confirmed by this, and this is not to knock anyone, there was a particular distillery in Pennsylvania that that I was not fond of the stuff that I've had before. Um, and, but Should I want to say it. Uh, no, I don't want to say it. It, it, it. I mean, I don't like to talk about my father or what he wears on the top of his head. <laughs> okay. But what I'm, but, but they had a single barrel from them and uh, it was glorious. I'm like, this yeah, you brought is, it to me. This I'm is like, just, I don't really yeah, love this, that. This, this is just proof that the right barrel from the right place for the right people can make all the difference in the world. And that's what I, that was when I was like, these guys are rocks. That's a great question. So how many, did you guys have to go through a lot of barrels when you got there? I mean, it, it, what did you have there? I mean, I know you, you, you go through a lot and you find those honey barrels. I mean, what were your, what were your thoughts, impressions after leaving? I mean, obviously you picked one, but they have a lot of things going on, I guess, that are pretty, pretty exciting, I assume. Yeah. So the good thing for us is we actually don't ever pick on site. So we'll go and we'll taste and we'll have the experience because we find when we go visit a distillery um, that we fall in love with everything. No matter what they pour by the end of it, you're in love with it. So we we have them, we either take stuff back with us and um, or have them ship it. And so they ship a range of things and we put that through multiple flights to see consistency, all of that other stuff um, to make sure that we're, we're liking the same one at the same amount of time, uh, the same priority of between the, the samples. So it's all slow and steady and consistency. And then eventually we end on one or more barrels because we actually have some of the Wollersheim rye in that blend. So we bought multiple barrels from them that we picked Ooh, as part yeah. of this oh, Nice. And you guys have to be unanimous in your decisions, right? If if you both don't mm -hmm. agree, it doesn't make the cut. Is that correct? I that, see. That's, that's correct. Tough. I like that. That's how we are. Right? We, also, we also don't want to cherry pick. So mm -hmm. if there's a distillery that sends us we don't want to we don't want too many samples if they send us 12 samples and only one of them is really good we're probably not going to buy that one we're not going to buy anything because we want to we want people to discover these places and then go discover their whiskey on their own and still and really enjoy their version of their their whiskey too so we don't want to point people towards a place that is generally not that great but has every once in a while just has an amazing honey barrel we want it to be places oh, that like no. maybe won't always be a cast strength but has unique and interesting whiskeys that are worth discovering. Well, I like that that benefits both parties. That, that yeah, shines right. a spotlight on the distillery, but then also on your ability to pick those honey barrels, which I think is cool. So that's that's great. So Got another question. There's in. the Wallers. Do you another question to pull well, up? Well, between, yeah. between, uh, between whiskeys? Or We're going, going to the next one. Yes. Okay. So you can pull that back up, Todd. Here you go. All right. Question. Here's, here's, here's your next question. All right, guys, Do you know the, the Midwest? <laughs> oh, okay. Boy. Here we go. This one might be tougher. All right, this state is home to the largest basket in the world what? and a whopping seven stories high. This is actually the building for the <gasps> Longaberger Basket Company. What state my is my home? Loved Longaber my mom loves Longaberta baskets, but I have no idea where they're from. This is get, the, oh, much more answer. Midwestern than the first question. Yeah. But. I'm going <laughs> to guess. They, they, I'm going to go first this time, right? I'm going to guess Wisconsin. Okay. Well, That's my guess, too. Yeah, I'm going with Wisconsin. This is how we both right. lose. Anybody in the chat? Yeah, the Longenberger the chat's, headquarters. The chat's not even ready to go on this. They're like, no way. No, they don't even. They don't, and they, the answer is. Oh, it's Ohio. Ohio. Oh, no. Wrong. Oh, oh, this is a little town. One. This is a little town in Ohio. So there you go. So sure, I'm sure you sure got it. Ohio. So, yes. So there we go. All right. So, so far, one to one. One to one still. Adam and Nora are tied. Mm. I like it. Okay. You can pull that down. All right. So let's, uh, we'll see how this ends. Maybe we'll get one more right. We'll see. <laughs> I was wrong on that too. My mom's a fan. Yeah, my mom's a fan too. I just never knew where they came from. I thought it was Wisconsin as well. Ohio, man. All right. See, so what should we go to 
next, gems. guys? We've we've done the Wollerheim, Wollersheim, uh, bourbon. Wollersheim. What next? Let's do the Starlight next. Yeah. All right, let's show you, so you up it's... there. Let's show that in there, Adam. Let's see that bottle, that beautiful bottle from Starlight and Lost Lantern. All right, so Very we've nice. got here Very Starlight nice. okay. is a 118.7 proof six year, and uh, there's 132 bottles in this one, so a little bit short of, our, of a barrel here. And MSRP ninety dollars on it. So we've had a lot of star, you know Starlight. We love you know what they do. A lot of people love their finishes. This is a straight, uh, a straight cool. bourbon. Yep. Pull us up. Oh, sorry, I left them up. Um, so <laughs> anything else you guys want to add to the particulars about this one? <laughs> the spotlight's on. That's exactly why we wanted to do a straight bourbon from them because they're so well known for their finishes, especially among like, whiskey people who are not necessarily physically close to them, uh, and because they do a amazing right. finishes yeah. their underlying whiskey is really really good too and that's what we wanted to showcase here so yeah and it's worth noting yeah. this is a rare one for us because it actually spent two years in vermont so of the six years that it has lived its life two of those were in vermont and four were in indiana so still cool climate and actually we, oh. we find that vermont doesn't have much of an influence but it is worth noting okay I'm yeah, sure. I mean traditional on the nose. I'm sure Vermont romantic. has all that local sweetness from the, you know, uh, well, yeah. maple. I don't know. Like that I there. don't know. Um, yeah, you know, vanilla, caramel. Yeah, traditional, really nice nose. I, I on think it. I, when I my notes from the first we'll one on this before even really diving in, yeah, was that this was just a really nice classic expression of a bourbon, which we really liked. Like this, this was, you're used to Starlight cherry on finishes, too. but this was a beautiful expression of just what a bourbon should taste like. And that's what we loved about this. It's one. viscous again. It's so, I mean, look at the oil. I mean, it's so oily, which is great for a six year. The star, I, I love that, how it coats your tongue. I get cherry and chocolate right away on this. Vanilla, caramel, maybe even some, hold on. Yeah. Mm. And, the, and some burnt sugar. You now, you're good. Oh, the classic profile is no, so but, important because with the Wollersheim, that's a Wisconsin bourbon. That is something totally different. And this yeah. is more classic, kind of almost Kentucky style. And we wanted to show that that exists in the Midwest yeah. and is part of, of of what the Midwestern profile looks like. Especially from Starlight because it's half a mile, like 20 miles minutes away from Louisville. It's right across the border from Kentucky. So it makes sense. It should right. be somewhat. Yeah. Similar. And no, we so did Anthony not get any pushback. Yeah. Yeah. No pushback. Okay. Yeah. There's the answer. They they sell us the whiskey and then they are they are generally cool with with what happens to it. And it's fun. Part of what an independent bottler can do is show what a whiskey looks like when it's older, because maybe a distillery right. doesn't have the desire or the cash flow or the profile where they show how it at six years versus four years or five years that they're doing now. But I think that's a really interesting part of being an IB. I think one of the, um, to the, to the question about mm -hmm. aging it for the next I, few I years. It. Sorry. We, we, we have a little bit of a delay. There's over definitely here. a delay between what our video and, and yep. y'all. So <laughs> sorry if we're talking over each other. <laughs> Vermont internet for you. Go ahead, you go. Uh, yeah, that's all uh, right. We we asked uh, Christian Huber uh, if he wanted to try this before he approved letting us put the Starlight name on there, and he was like, "No, I trust you. It's fine." And I happened to visit there like a week later, and I thought he was going to ask me about it and want to try it. And instead, I just came, and he was like, "Hey, nice, nice to see you. Do you want to taste these twenty different versions of Starlight aged in different kinds of French oak and from different forests around France?" And I said, "Yes." Yes, I do want to do that, and that's what we spend the next four hours doing. That's awesome. That is awesome. They, I mean, that is, what I do like though is that they are really they're they're renowned for for finishing and finishing well. They they do it they do it well. You can almost bet if you mm -hmm. pick up a finished Starlight, you're, you're going nice. to enjoy it. So I love the classic expression by itself. Oh. If I'm not mistaken, the Starlight Rye that you released a single barrel, just a straight rye about what was it two years ago? Does, yep. Is that correct? It's about two years ago, you guys released a straight rye from Starlight. Yep. Um, yeah, that we, made our top ten with right. years, years yeah. ago. It did because it was so good. In fact, the the yeah, I remember that. That was the first I think time I yeah, actually even time. had Lost Lantern. I didn't yeah. know what that was, and you brought it. I was like, what, what, I'm confused. What is this again? Yeah. It's a Starlight, or no? It's Lost Lantern. What is it? And now yeah, we of course we it know was, it was actually very good. And then the bourbon that went, went with that, the Spirit Works bourbon, made our top ten bourbon. That's right, so Spirit those, Works. Those two single offerings were fantastic. From two distilleries that do some finishes very well, so that was really cool to see. So this is a fun expression. 
of a classic bourbon right across the street from Kentucky, which I love. And uh, Anthony's got a question for you guys. I, I, you, have you gotten any uh, the Critterden or Detlin whiskey barrels? Have you ever had an experience with those? Alabama two? whiskey. Yeah. So I have uh, I've emailed a little bit with uh, one of the folks who runs Datling, and I want to get down there because we we ha- won't work with the distillery unless we visit it in person, and that means I have to find a way to get myself down to the Alabama Gulf Coast. Crittenden I never heard of until just now, and I looked it up, um, <laughs> and now I'm curious about that, and can probably loop it into the same trip. But I will say we have some uh, we have some other there Mississippi you whiskey that you may hear about sometime soon. Beautiful, love hearing that. Well, uh, you just let me know, Adam. I'm down there. I got work in both those states, and I will be happy to escort you down right. so we can have a couple sips together. So let me know. Sounds James, good, good to see you guys. Good to see you guys. I'll come in and like and share, guys. We have more of Starlight on their collection, their spring collection highlighting the Midwest. Uh, is coming out tomorrow yep. on their website and Sealbacks. I think somebody asked you guys ship to Michigan. Why? Well, I know, I know Sealbacks does, I, I'm pretty sure. So, uh, yeah, I, th- I think you should be good to go. And if you're in, I, I think the only states they probably don't is Tennessee and Texas, I believe, similar to Shared Poor. Okay. So, uh, yeah, there you go. So, before we get into the next one, we mm. are now three of seven yeah. in. It is time to give Adam and Nora another trivia question. How well do they know the Midwest? So far, <laughs> they both have one correct answer. Right. All right, Todd, if you'd oh, like yeah. to pull the next oh, one yeah, up yeah, sorry. Here. Yeah, let's do it. <laughs> here we go next question next question we pull this okay that looks we good. know a thing or two about great desserts and we are the birthplace of the ice cream sundae in 1881 a drugstore owner in two rivers served ice cream with syrup and a cherry on top on a sundae and eventually became known as the sundae oh what state is my home the sundae interesting 1881 this is this is harder than jeopardy mm-hmm. good lord andrew well, look, it's a Midwest collection, so now it's Midwest trivia. We're going to see how it Sunday good does do look here. nice right there. Mm-hmm. Uh, with, anybody uh, in the chat know? I'm going with Indiana for this one. Indiana. I was thinking Illinois. Okay. Okay. Yeah, so I'm Indiana going for. Ah, oh, there you go. No Illinois and then Indiana, and Todd's vote really doesn't count, <laughs> yeah, but we'll doesn't put it matter in anyway. <laughs> Whiskey Nose says Wisconsin. Okay. Sugar, kid is, Sugar Kid's been two for two, and he says. It is Wisconsin. It is Wisconsin. <laughs> Wisconsin is all right. So We're just getting we it all wrong. <laughs> just different yeah, states I wrong. That's true. All right. All right. We're going to have to start seeing that score can come back up. So there. that means Wisconsin was the first Sunday. First, yep. First Unbelievable. Sunday. Unbelievable. All, all right. right. Well, don't worry. Well, you got a couple more chances to all redeem right. yourself. Well, the good thing is we have good whiskey coming next. Guys, what should we get into next? I assume the last possible bourbon, maybe? Exactly. The few. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. All right. And while we pour that, I saw one question in the chat earlier that I wanted to answer, which is what is the best time to visit a Lost Lantern tasting room in Vermont? Uh, that was a little while ago, which is uh, we are probably like the fall is the prettiest time in Vermont. It's, uh, it's also the busiest. Um, right now is the worst time because it's all mud and sometimes snow, and then the snow turns Basically, into mud again. June um, on. June on is nice. Yeah. Um, and we are open uh, in our tasting room Fridays and Saturdays and also by appointment. So if someone is is coming up, they can shoot us an email on our website and uh, set up a special appointment with us to make sure we're here in person for them. There you go. Andy, I think uh, you need to get up there. You know I'll go up there. I know. You can't wait to get up there. You're, you're going to go too, right? Sure. Of course you will. You won't see Tom. All right. So let's there. get Don't into worry. a few. I will, I will, I'm going to be honest here with everyone out here. And, I, and when I did a, re- a short review of this, I, mm-hmm. I mentioned... I got to be honest, guys. Uh, maybe I'm. It's my own bias. I've ha- I had a few few that I was not crazy about, and so when I saw you did, you know, you you went the few it, again, raised my eyebrows. So I, I'm glad you do this because it makes me similar to your dad's hat, right? Oh, I said it. I'm sorry. It ma- <laughs> makes me then, you know, I shouldn't probably because I try one whiskey or two whiskeys, write a distillery off, and you know things change. I change. We all change. This certainly is better than what I've tasted before. Tell us a little about this this bourbon. Yeah, so few, it, they've been around since the early days of craft distilling. They're an OG. Um, and they're in an urban setting, which is unique for the Midwest. But for us, we've been trying to work with them since the very beginning of Lost Lantern because they are a counterpart mm. to the other mm. two bourbons that are, is a delicate side of bourbon. What does it look like if it's not 
big and in your face. It's not, it's not necessarily for everyone, but I think that it's a great example of what we see in the Midwest in a cooler climate where there's less oak influence, a little bit lower proof and really wonderful floral um, profile and just delicate and elegant in a way that is hard to do in the warm climates that we're used to getting bourbon from. Yeah. I, when we were on that panel about mm. a week ago, that, that, term that word floral came up quite a bit Floor delicate and fruity delicate and fruity, came yes. up quite a bit so there was almost a lot of these synonyms to describe mm. this this kind of nice uh -huh. softness to a whiskey that you're not always mm. used to getting because sometimes i love the nose on this the the thing about bourbon is is it, you kind of like that those big bold tannic like in your face notes mm -hmm. and if you're going for more of that irish whiskey mm -hmm. kind of feel where it's triple distilled that's where you can mm. kind of calm things down this is almost like an homage to that because you get some beautiful floral cherry notes that I think are really nice for sure sound with this um Almost. I was really impressed with this one I thought this was great because I did like the the fruit forward nature of this without ever being uh to use your term cloyingly sweet like it wasn't that's what I liked there was a nice balance to this it's a, it's a you don't use this word often with whiskey but it's a, it's a pretty whiskey it really is it's very nice it's almost like yeah you use wine terms to describe whiskey, which is what well, I, really I got like. like cherry cola but I also I do think it's floral I think it is sweet well, I tell you I almost said like the cherry fun dip I know that's that sounds clearly sweet but then the cinnamon <laughs> yeah. and sort of that that cinnamon spice kind of comes through and washes that away and I even get like a, a milk creamy milk chocolate on the finish which really rounds that out it, it to me. It's, it was the one bottle that surprised me the most, maybe because I had the least expectations for it. And it shows you your bias should be thrown out the door on all these kind of things, right? And I, I'm glad that you do this. And I hope people don't see, well, I've had a few that I wasn't like psyched about. I'm telling you guys, each and every one of these is a great opportunity to revisit a distillery that maybe you didn't have a great experience with. It's going to, I think, prove you otherwise. If that makes yeah. sense. Yeah, it's finding finding right. palace that you drive yeah. with. And I, I've said it. Million times tonight already, but I I trust your palates that when you're putting something out that we're gonna enjoy it, and so that's that's what you kind of hope people will gravitate towards. You, Has anybody in the chat had a few before? And I'm curious what the chat's experience was. I mean, again, Andy, when's the last time you bought a few bottle? It's been uh, a while, right? Yeah, it's been a while. I didn't I didn't dislike it. I, it, I right. thought it was. I shouldn't I, say it, I didn't dislike so it. I think it there's wow me. there are whiskeys that yeah. So maybe it wasn't one that at that time stood out. It was like I've got to rush back right. and get a backup bottle. Right. But Brian the Bourbon, um, I really was surprised by this one and thought this was a, just a beautiful offering. So if hey. you're looking for something that's a little bit different What's than up, the rest of the lot, this is a great place to go with the Midwest collection. So yeah, Brian, Tracy, the captain, smell like a Brian formerly of Sagamore's in the house. Good to see you, Brian. Yeah, Brian, meet Adam and Nora. You would love them. They're great. And you guys would love yes. Brian. He's do awesome. you guys know who Brian Tracy is? I'm sure you do, right? I, believe I, not. I, I, I met him when I was, I was the advocate. I came in early days of Sagamore being on the market and spoke with us then about what they were up to. So, hey, Brian. <laughs> Beautiful. Good guy. He's a very good guy. All right. Um, yeah. See, Anthony, I'm with you on that. I, I, it hasn't been bad. Well, I haven't loved it. And I'm telling you, this bottle will change the way you think of you. And I think that's a good thing. It, it Again, it's the same thing, the Tom Foolery effect. I'm not the Tom Foolery. The, the hat, dad's hat. Tom Foolery is amazing. By the way. <laughs> Spoiler alert. Uh, it, it's the, uh, you know, it, it opened you back up. Now I, I, I want to hear from, uh, from few. And, you know, I'll revisit it because... Hell, I mean, I don't. Have you seen any single barrels from Fuel? I haven't, but that's the other thing about yeah. when you revisit these is next thing you know, now you're actively looking for these distilleries. So you're doing this beautiful cross promotion with people too. Like, hey, mm -hmm. I had that awesome bottle from Fuel that was a Lost Lantern pick. Now, if I see it in the store, there's a single see? barrel. I'm grabbed and want to get it. So that thing. Kevin's really cool. got the 10th anniversary four grain. Uh, uh, it's very good. You got a few bunkers. Hey, Kevin, let's let's do a little swap here. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just joking. So there you go. Anyway, uh, all right. I have a question for you guys. Oh, as next we get ready to oh, move next question. Let me bring it up. Next one. Let's add all right, this guys. to the stage. Chat, here get we ready. Go. Let me Chat, get rid of the ready for Kevin. This. Good comment, though. Question four in our Midwest challenge for Adam and Nora. Mm. If you like popcorn, particularly Orville Redenbachers, know that all of that popcorn mainly comes from this one state. In fact, 90% of the world's popcorn comes from this midwestern it's state. It's got to be Iowa, right? It's Redenbacher corn. himself was actually born here. Name the state. Well, we already had Iowa as an answer. I know. So, um, yeah. No. 
That's Brian Tracy right there, by the way. Not as you're giving your answer, I'm going to say I'm going to say Illinois. Oh, no, no, I didn't say there could be repeats. There definitely there, there could, could be repeats. Be repeats. Like, so someone says Iowa. Iowa, Iowa, Iowa. Yeah. Okay, you're both going Iowa. Todd, you're going I, I, Iowa. I would say Iowa too, I'm and you're going, saying corn, but I know that's probably too predictable. Oh. I'm going Illinois. Uh, no, are you going to change it? For better or for worse? No, that was Illinois. my original guess. <laughs> All right. And the answer is Indiana. Indiana. I'm telling you, Sugar Kitty. about that? Sugar Kitty, yeah. whoever the that town? is, is doing quite well. So the secret is that we know exactly. Midwestern whiskey. We do not know Midwestern history mm -hmm. and culture. <laughs> I, had to, I had to quiz you if you're doing the Midwestern collection. I'm helping build that knowledge. Orville Redenbach was born in a town called Brazil, Indiana. And, Brazil, uh, Indiana. Yes, but they made 90% of the world's popcorn comes from Indiana. Who knew? So there you go. You can pull that down. Okay. Sure. So um, I'm glad this isn't Jeopardy that you guys are in whiskey. Uh, so that, but that's okay. This has been fun so far. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm liking. Andy, this. You're, this you're, you're, you're like uh, stumping everyone except Sugar Kitty. Except for except for Sugar Kitty. That's right. All right. Next one, guys. I think we're getting the rise, and that gets me a bit excited. I love bourbon, but these rise. Oh, is that yours? Uh, is that Tom's Flurry. If my thanks. eyes do not deceive me. All right. All right. Yeah. Spoiler alert. This is my favorite a lot. I love this rye. I think this maybe it's it's one of the best ryes that'll come out this year, and I it'll be it should be on our it will be on my list. If there's ten other whiskeys that are better rye whiskeys that are better than this, then I'll be damn. <laughs> I'm serious. How do you really feel about this? So this one is. Do you guys want to tell us a little bit about this whiskey, or do you want to let Todd just blow I, the I'm whole just time? telling you, I love it. So right, well, there we'll, you go. Let, well, let the creators talk us a little bit about it. Go ahead. Well, Sorry. This this is what I love about what we're talking about is that we're just making you look at different distilleries either that you've never heard of before or that you have experienced in the past with in a new light and that's that's what we hope for um so tom's foolery is a is one of the smallest distilleries that we've worked with they're uh, also one of the ogs of craft distilling but weren't as uh didn't have as much of a national presence early on um started distilling in 2008 very traditional uh practices very labor intensive um open top wooden fermenters uh reminds me a lot of a farmhouse distillery in France or something like that, where the farmer is like distilling their produce and stuff from their neighbors and stuff from a little farther afield sometimes. And they're in a very cool climate uh, right on the shores of Lake Erie. Um, if for, for me growing up in upstate New York, I'm very, I know what the weather in Buffalo was like and the weather in Cleveland, not that different from Buffalo, all snow all the time, um, like foot of snow every week. Um, and that lets them, age their whiskey for, for a lot longer without getting intense oak extraction. Yeah, which is the, I think it's the fun of this one for us is that nine year age statement, but it's not like a nine year whiskey that you see from a warmer climate. You get to see what rye does when it's not all oak by nine years old. How, the, how does that rye flavor develop over the course of nine years? It's, it's one of our favorites from the collection as well. It's fantastic. I think the consensus among the panel was that if it wasn't at the top, it was near it because of how good it was. I can't wait for this tomorrow. I'll, I'll, I'll be honest. There's 200 bottles, 170. Oh, God, Lord. 116.5 no, no, proof, no, nine year age statement. Now 168 because we're going to grab one. <laughs> um, More than one. Maybe. But I'll tell you, I, I bought this bottle, a bottle of Tom's Full. That's right. A little, yes. uh, about a year was and a half a ago. It was a rye. And uh, full transparency. I bought it because the bottle looked cool. And I was like, even if this is <laughs> not Louise. good, this is like a decanter bottle that you could. I was like, because that's a really cool looking bottle. I'd never heard of it before. Hi Ben, and was really impressed by uh, the quality of the juice that, that was there. I was like, hey, I never Again, heard of this place. I'd never seen them or heard of them until you had that bottle, and then now they're here. And it was really good. So when I saw this on the list, I was like, oh yeah, I can't yeah. wait to dig in and try this one. And it was it lived okay, up to so everything and then some. I get like the rice. You can smell it's a rye right away. Uh, so this has that 70% winter rye, 30% uh, malted rye, correct? That's the mash bill on this, I believe. Really I, unique. Did I get that right? Yeah. There yep. we go. Yes. Okay. So like a lemongrass and rye spice on the nose, and then you just drink it, and oh, my God. It's so viscous. And you get tons of like – it's green apple. I mean, weird tropical fruits and a hint of mint – through there, like a fruit snacks as well. Almost, it's very you know, it's 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 a ride here. It's a sleigh ride on your tongue. Do you know what I love about your description? 
descriptions. Well, I I, I just say things as all they hit my your, tongue. All of your childhood like I'm sweets just, come. It's what my palate is, man. To you, like everything that you weren't supposed to eat. Your There's mom's a cover. You just start to just just use as descriptors, it's which oaky. I like. I I love everything about. This is what a rye whiskey should taste well, like. I was gonna say, I think the Starlight proved what a beautiful traditional bourbon can taste like, mm. and I think the Tom's Flory oh. honestly is a really beautiful example of a, of a my nice favorite rye. Just a my favorite great example. I love this bottle. Yeah, it it's hits so good, centers. guys. I hope you guys, some some of you guys, go out there and get this tomorrow. It's really good. Real quick, D Daniel has a question. I I wanted to ask you this. Have you ever thought of doing like smaller so people can buy all seven of them? I mean, it's, that probably changes your bottling and sort of maybe that can't be done, but that is kind of interesting to have like a smaller run of all these so you can buy the set instead of you know I don't know if anybody's gonna maybe some people probably people buy all four, seven, ooh, but ooh. for those that you can't afford it, is there ever any talk about doing smaller runs? Yeah, maybe at the distillery only on on your website. Maybe at the dis maybe at the our tasting room only. Honestly, it just from a production perspective doesn't make sense because if you're doing smaller yeah. bottles, it just increases the number of bottles that you have to buy and the amount of time. Yeah. And we're yeah. a very limited team. We do have a full time production person who every time this question comes up because it's not the first time he is not excited about it because it, it, it just creates a lot more work. And, um, if we're able to I'm sell sure. it in 750 mls for now, we're, we're sticking to that. Maybe we'll do a few for the yeah. tasting room, but not, not widely available. And so it is would worth you noting think maybe it's a good idea. Sorry, we're delayed, but it's worth noting that this Tom's Fillory no. will go fast tomorrow. We have very few bottles <laughs> online. Yep. So, <laughs> absolutely. No. So, they, I gotta get it. What time is it? What time are we, we? Do we know what time? So, newsletter subscribers get access at noon, and yeah. then on Sealbox, it'll also go be available around noon as well. So, if this is something that anyone here wants to buy, I would recommend being on there quickly because the Tom's Foolery bourbon went so fast last time and people loved that one so much. So this is the one we actually limited on our website to one bottle per person to try to slow that down a little bit, but I think it probably won't slow things down that much. Yeah. And I, I'll say that for this particular one, yeah. Sealbox actually has more of the inventory than we do on our site. So, mm -hmm. um, and here's a little spoiler for anyone uh, who really wants it is that Sealbox usually puts it puts anything up about half an hour before they send out an email about it, so you can usually snag it before the mad rush starts mm -hmm. if you're paying attention. Which will probably mm -hmm. be around uh, at noon. They go. said they'd make it live Got even you. if they're emailing. The yeah. That's awesome. And 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 BT Brian is chiming about the smaller bottles. The other, it's it's, it's not easy to do. So my suggestion would be. If you want to just do a test run and send us seven, <laughs> well, they did just that. Small, they just, did that. Just like another round that's a little bit bigger. <laughs> just you know, no. that's a good way to try Stop it out it. to see if you like. I think it. the I best just, is you go to the distillery, and I'm sure you have all these at. I see them behind the bar, probably. That's where you'll get a, a taste of all these, and then you can buy. Them. I told you, I'm gonna go. I'll be there. there you go. I'm, I'm gonna be coming soon. Go. All right, this is a fantastic. It's my favorite, Andy. One of your top favorites, right? I don't Absolutely. know if it is your favorite. I, I, it was up in my top three. I love okay. it. I'll reveal my three at the ah, end. But before okay. we get on to the next one, let's play. Oh some God, here more we go. Trivia. Oh, here we go. Guys. This is gonna throw way off. It is. Oh no! It, it, like oh my gosh! Oh my gosh! Oh yes! Way to go, Andy. Yeah, beer, bourbon, and rock. Way to the go, Andy. The rockers enough. Enough. Had two top 100 charting That's hits. New thing and the tear jerking ballad "Fly High, Michelle." Which state did they call home? I don't even know this. To Los Angeles, California. So they're a Midwest band. They First of all, the question Midwest. I have for Adam: Have you ever heard of the band Enough's Enough? No. And you can be honest. Say no. No, no. <laughs> Maybe they're not big age rockers. I don't think. Although that's even even age rockers don't know who these guys are. That's true. I mean, we do. I had a question about Longenberger baskets. Enough's enough. This is supposed to be hard. That's true. I, I like that. That's so, true. So, which state are these guys from? They did have two top one hundred uh, hits. Real so, quick, uh, the proof on the Tom's Foolery is one sixteen point five. Nine year rye. Uh, and so the combination is one, two, three, yes. four, five. All right. Look at it. Sugar Kitty says, "Oh my God, don't give enough." Them See, all right, let's see. I think I have, two, I think I have there are only two of them. So, what do you think? Where are these guys from? Where do they look like they come from? They look like they come from LA, and uh, they, they yeah, do. yeah. I think you're first. I think they're. I went first last time. I, I thought I would. No, I, I did Illinois first. I'm gonna say Indiana because they 
kind of look like people fr- who live in LA but move there from Indiana. I agree with I agree. Like with, Axel Rose. That's okay. exactly right. Okay. They, they, mm-hmm. Exactly. Well done, Adam. Okay. I'm going with Adam on that one. All right. So why, why for Indiana? Why should we like Wisconsin or something? Yeah, I'm gonna go Wisconsin. Just oh, I didn't say that. All right. Dave says Illinois. And the correct Uh-oh. answer is it is Illinois. They are from Chicago. Oh, Illinois. we're so, terrible. So, so, so yes, yeah, so I'm not doing good either. Uh, yeah, you guys need to brush up on that Midwestern trivia quiz. That's okay. That's fine. All right, pull it back down, Todd. We give, right. you have two more chances to redeem yourself, we'll guys. Real happens. quick, all super chats tonight are going for one of your older bottles that we have an extra of that we that are near and dear to our heart. It is a bottle. It's Andy's bottle. He has a couple. I've drank almost all of mine, so I stop. It's the Still Austin Lost Lantern. Oh, sorry. We are giving away a full bottle of this to Super Chatters mm-hmm. tonight, and uh, this is a fan. I mean, we yeah. love. We just picked one of their first rise, so it we're is their super first excited rye about that. for YouTubers. I talked to actually the, the boys of Still Austin today, and they did give me an update. Uh, the slight bottom delay issues are kind of coming to Done. a close, and we are looking at hopefully a April release date. For yes, you guys. The upcoming Still Austin uh, Cast Strength Rye, our second barrel with them. Love those guys. They're, they're great. And there, so. I know you guys are fans of, of Corbin Cash as well. We Andy went out to Corbin Cash and met with oh, David. Wow. Got a nine-year Merced Rye. Nine-year Merced Rye barrel for our patrons and a eight-year Hazmat bourbon. The first bourbon they've ever done. We're super excited about that. So, yeah. Andy, when you go visit them, you have to take them some of our our single barrels so that they can try. I would be happy to. There you go. That. If there you guys go. are interested in trying, I would be happy to, to, <laughs> to, to bring them up to you. There you go. All right. So Sugar, Sugar Cake, does, he's not happy that it's not. Oh, okay. it All right, guys. What's next in the collection? We have two more to go. What do we got next? The Middle West Dry. Yes. There we go. All right. I will say, oh, I like this yes. one, too. Finish that I one, really like this one, too. So tell us a little about this Middle West Rye uh, single cask, 197 bottles, 126 proof, aged four years, MSRP 90 bucks. Yeah. So Middle West has uh, been distilling since the uh, turn of the last decade, 2008, 2010, something like that, uh, in Columbus, uh, one of the um, first distilleries in Columbus, and actually now one of the largest independent uh, craft distilleries in the country. They've recently completed a major expansion, um, already had a, a column, now have a um, have quite substantial capacity for um, laying down whiskey, both for their own brand and um, for contract for others. So if this is a distillery that people don't know yet, uh, you will soon because they're going to be coming out with a lot of whiskey, and we think it's really good. Um, their signature for their rye is you making it with uh, pumpernickel grain. So instead of the rye you normally use to make whiskey, they're using rye you normally use to make bread. Um, and that has fatter berries, which leads to more flavor. So it's it's definitely a little different than oh. your everyday rye. Yeah, this this is so good. This one was I I was dead set, and I remember saying the only oh. time I spoke on this the, the live yes, stream that you guys had was you had a lot of people on. Um, mm. That is one hundred percent sure I was that Tom Sawyer was going to win. I tasted this and I said. Mm. Now you've got competition because ah. this was just that good. I thought it was fantastic. So another absolute uh, winner in my book. So yeah, on the nose, it you know, it smells really nice. There's a bit of rice spice there, but I tell you, it's all in the palate for me on this one. And I, I said it's like almost like it's weird. I don't know why I say Thanksgiving in a glass, but it's just got that special sort of. I'd love to drink this around really anytime, but the holidays especially for some reason. Maybe it's that pumpernickel rye that I get. I love everything about it. It's creamy. It's it's viscous. I know this sounds goofy because you you do all those weird mm-hmm. fruit snacks and mm-hmm. fun dip and stuff like that that you say, but chocolate boost. I remember saying this to me felt like pumpkin space latte, like, like a, said. yeah, pumpkin pumpkin yeah, latte from Starbucks. It's yeah. like this is what this kind of reminded me of because it had some. They're like what? No, it doesn't. <laughs> beautiful clovey kind of flavors and some just some all spice notes that I thought were really cool. That that probably because of the type of the pumpernickel, I think that maybe adds to that. Um, I've only had one other offering from Middle West, which I thought was really good. This was just yeah. that elevated. It was the bourbon, I think. Yeah, yeah. this is super good. Really, what really do good. you guys? I mean, you must be happy with it. Uh, what do you get out of it? We haven't asked you that tonight on any of these. I'm curious what you get out of this one. Well, After that's we because we usually don't volunteer tasting notes. When you, if you put us on the spot, we will. But we like to hear what everyone thinks, and we know that everyone is so. All right. 
you're always influenced by what you hear, but I, I get like a, like a roasty, toasty chocolate note from it. Like brownie uh, mm -hmm. to me. Yeah, mm. freshly baked brownies. Sourdough brownies. Yeah. Ooh. Oh, nice. oh, yes. But it's good. Can I ask you, did you a few whiskeys go get Fun Dip that like Todd got? <laughs> with, that with... was in the few. Oh, okay. Just, just, just cherry Fun Dip. Fun, that was the yeah. cherry Fun Dip. Yeah, just, up, just making sure. All right. Shut up, Andy. Shut no, up. I, I, I get what I get, okay? I can I, help I, that. <laughs> I love that about you. That's right. No, I think um, this, I think, was number two for me. Um, so this is so good. This it's is, it's really good. God help, Andy. We got to divide and conquer with this tomorrow, so we can afford all. So this. you buy <laughs> yes. the single offerings. I'll get the car flung. What? And Wait, we what? will share. No, I, somehow I feel like I'm coming out on the bottom of this here. No, we'll we'll call that, guys. Yeah. So if you're if you're a fan of Middle West spirits, this also my, my question to you guys. This has what percentage of that pumpernickel? It's not a complete a complete hundred percent pumpernickel rye, right? It's is it a blend? It's a four. Is it a four grain, right? It's, it's a four grain, but it's very heavily uh, towards the rye. It's eighty percent rye, ten percent, and then ten five five um, for the rest. So it's oh. a four grain, but really like very very strong on the rye. So when other groups are doing so their good. pumpernickel rye, that's a, is that a hundred percent? So this is a different. I, I've never I haven't had a lot from these guys. So is this something that they normally put out this mash bill, or is this something that's yeah. this is their sort of standard special, mash bill? Yeah. This is okay. All right, got it. All right, I love it. I love everything about this. All right. Well, that oh, another question. Another oh, question. hold on, Heart Sight. Thank you. Yeah, she's going in for that lost lantern. Lost lantern was still awesome, which is great. Yours. Uh, good. I will be sending you. I sent out. You'll get another box if you win. I just mm -hmm. sent out your winnings from last week, uh, Heart Sight. So there you go. All right. All here's right. the next oh, question. Oh. We're almost at the end of our questions. Okay. Michael Phelps. That sure is. So it's Baltimore's, Baltimore's own. own Michael Phelps may be the greatest swimmer of all time, but. This state is the birthplace of the butterfly stroke. It oh. was invented by David Armbruster, head coach of this major university located in question mark. So it was invented by David Armbruster. Without David from this I, I where, state. Just Google, how what? do we how will with, we ever know this? I'm going with Indiana. Would you go with that? Uh, Indiana and Notre Dame okay. for this one, but who knows? Mm. I like it. That's a good, okay. that's a good guess. An educated guess. I'm right there. going. Nora, what are you Illinois. thinking? Illinois. Illinois. Okay, Todd. Any guesses? Enough schools. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna go back to Iowa. Yeah, I, I feel like Iowa would be a big swimming school. Okay. Iowa. Well, Todd, it's a good thing you're not playing because <laughs> you actually did get that one right. <laughs> this is from the University of Iowa. So, um, and I have. Been to oh. Iowa City, and I gotta say, what a beautiful little college town! I loved it; it was fantastic. But yes, so Iowa. Some people knew it. So there we go. So that's just about it. We do have one more bonus question yeah, at the end, but so far, you guys are tied at one apiece. <laughs> um, I, I, yeah. As Adam said, they know Midwest whiskey. Maybe not necessarily well, when they do their New England collection. We will see just how well uh, they know. New England, uh, but for okay. now, this is, these were tough. Let's Maybe say they're not, they're not easy. Are right, you can pull that down? All right, so Andy, our, our last whiskey tonight, guys. So tomorrow at around 12 p.m. on both Sealbacks and the Lost Lantern website, uh, they will the, the the spring collection from Midwest. All these will be live. So good. Hopefully, good, this good is giving a, a kind of an idea of what we think of them. Mm -hmm. The tasting notes, you know, go for what you want. There's nothing in here that you will be upset with, uh, for sure. So. Uh, get what you think you like, and uh, I know we are. Right? Yeah, we definitely are. Now, speaking yes. of Iowa, let's go to Iowa. Let's mm. finish off the night with something with a different. little place called Cedar Ridge. We are familiar with them. AG, thank you. We do have a couple patrons. Uh, Iowa patrons and friends out there. I've been mm. to Iowa multiple times. Actually, really love the state. So, was excited for this one. Tell us a little bit about this offering because it is a bit of a outlier from the rest of the Midwest collection. Yeah, so, so let's uh your thoughts yeah. on what the process was in this. Um, so Cedar Ridge is one of our core partners. This is actually the first distillery that we've worked with in all styles of our whiskey. So blend, single malt, bourbon, rye, and now our cream label, which is an other category, which means none, none of those other things. Um, this was actually whiskey that we bought from them before we had the Midwest collection lined up because we tasted it and fell in love with it. 
Um, it's actually our second malted wheat whiskey that we have ever done. And our first one from Brooklyn um, was a nine year malted wheat, what has been a, a favorite for people. And so we wanted to have uh, another have one that, that is a little, little sibling of it. Oh, yeah, it's very, very good. I do have that one. 203 bottles on this, uh, 123.1 proof, age six years, MSRP around 90 bucks. Yeah. So, this, uh, th so this was different, and I liked it in a lot of really good ways. And the one thing that I said that I mm. feel like this would appeal of all the, the whiskeys if ah. you have scotch drinkers trying to this foray their way into bourbons and ryes, I feel like this is a really nice step. I feel like direction. it's the other way. Bourbon drinkers that are looking at the sky. To me, well, I got it, it, very it works, scotchy works, tones from the nose. Yes, yeah, exactly. Yes. Yeah. So anyway, uh, yeah, I love the nose on this. It's super fruit forward. Vanilla. It almost smells creamy. Is that, that I know that makes zero sense, right? But it does. God, I love that. Yeah, that's yeah. a great nose on the palate. Yeah. That's your signature for Do you uh, just a story. Oh. Do you want to hire Todd to do your descriptions <laughs> no. for you when you write <laughs> these up for your labels? I I, I would uh, I I don't I don't I cost too much. That's what it is. That's what it is, <laughs> guys. So back to the actual whiskey here. I I mean this is the I think the palate follows the nose, and when you say scotch, it's 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 more of a mouthfeel sort of creaminess. And you mentioned this is the that's the the trend for all of these, correct? That they, they they're super viscous, that creaminess. And that's certainly what I've said a few times tonight. I get it here too. I got like vanilla pudding, fruit forward, scotchy, even like a coffee cake on the end. I got. I loved every. I mean, listen, I'm not a scotch guy, but this is this grew on me really quick on this. Yeah. No. I, I, the hardest part about this was ranking them because yeah, I know. Some, someone had to come at the bottom, and honestly, you'd be happy with all seven offerings because they're all really. Well, what really were your good. top? So, any what were your tops? If you had to pick three, if that I you're going to, for tomorrow, what if would I be? had to pick three, yes. um, it's it's. Can I do four? Sure, of course, <laughs> sure. That means you're paying for four, and I'll, <laughs> I'll, I'll just drink yours. No, <laughs> I, I, um, and I'll get the other three. I really, so as much as I love the Tom's Foolery, mm -hmm. I think it's a, a neck and neck tie with the far flung for me. Oh. For, Okay, for the top of the list, I, I just absolutely love Anthony. I love that I, Anthony I, out in the chat is definitely going for the far flung. Both of them are are just beautiful, um, and so I have a hard time. I could probably mm. teeter back and forth to the really and good. I think, think I think Middle West and and Wallersheim kind of would pair right there with three four and could both change places. To be truthfully honest with you, so I really I loved both of those. Those were my top four. Now that being said, I thought the few is the best. Um, in that kind of delicate floral type whiskey the that I've had, was my most surprising, which I was really, I really liked for and, me. And Cedar Ridge, because we've had so many offerings from yeah. them that weren't like this, it was so different. I loved that too. So let's just say you could spin a wheel and I'd be happy with any of these, but um, I agree. Yeah, they're, they're, I put out a little, quick little video today. I ranked all seven of them. My top four, if you want to go through it, obviously Tom's Foley was one for me. Two, it's that it's, it's, a, it's kind of a tie between the Middle West Spirits and that Wooler's time. I love that Wooler's time. And then Far Flung, I mean, really, two, three, and four could be interchangeable to me. Mm -hmm. I love them all. They're all great. So don't feel like just because we like those for the most, I think they're they're so different and and sort of, they're all sort of, yeah, you're creamy, but they, they have different profiles and it's something that, you're right, I wish we could buy them all, Andy. Well, let's, You buy four and I'll buy three. How's that? Sure. There you go. What, um... <laughs> I think the more important thing than yeah. which one is your favorite. Yeah. Is mm. and so now the fifth time for me sound like a broken record, <laughs> but if you now know that you'll really enjoy things from Lost Lantern, you yep. can go by descriptions of what you think might fit your flavor profile yep. and know that you're gonna enjoy it. So if you're like, I'm not looking for something big, maybe you don't jump on the Thomas Flurry. Maybe you mm. look look at the feel like that sounds like that was up my alley, or maybe this or the, the Cedar Ridge. Yeah. Um, you know, the Walters has a big boy. That's, That's 31 proof. So you kind of think about like based on that, like you won't go wrong with any of them. So now it's like what is more appealing in those flavor descriptors that you think will go? Because they're all just that good. So I'm really impressed. Well, let before me, you do that, there's one yep. more question to oh, see who can sorry. win this thing. Uh, all right, it's neck and neck between <laughs> Adam. Oh, okay. this is it could be down to this one. This is the, it is. It does. Okay. Go ahead. Yeah, it's where, up. Where'd you go? It's nope. up. I'm just okay. okay. It's up. 
Which Flacco is the greatest quarterback ever to play in the Midwest? Oh, God. Is it Flacco A from the Ravens, Flacco B from the Browns, Flacco C from the Broncos, or Flacco D from the Eagles? The greatest oh, he, ever to play. So think of where Flacco's playing. <laughs> this is, and he's now also, by the way, playing in Indiana. So, that's true. So you know, you should, <laughs> I just couldn't find a picture of him from Indiana. So, <laughs> so uh, which one is the best of the greatest quarterbacks? The question is, the, does Adam and Orton even know who Joe Flacco is? Hopefully, no. That's the whole point. Know, it's like, it's, like it, it's got to be when he played for the Ravens. I mean, how could it not be? Okay, so we're going to go A but for But think about where you're... Where does where do the Ravens play, and are they in a Midwest? It's not a state, so I don't think that that could be an answer. So you think it's what? I'm not going to give it away because I know the answer. Okay, all right. Well, I'm, I'm just trying to, to trying to appeal to you because you're in Baltimore, and <laughs> I'm, I'm all upset. I studied up on my okay. '80s rock before this podcast. Now we're going into <laughs> questions about popcorn <laughs> and football instead, and I can't keep up. I love that, Adam. That's so great. I love that about you. Well, that's true. You no, could throw a curveball here and just, you know, say hometown. No, Nora, which what say you okay. here? What do you think? Can you rattle them off one more time for us? Yeah. So, yes, so we on. have uh, Flacco A from Baltimore, yeah. Flacco B from Cleveland, Flacco C from Denver, and Flacco D from Philadelphia. Yeah. Mm. So B. <laughs> B from yeah. Cleveland. <laughs> yeah. Okay. And Todd, is that what you're doing? That would be my guess because it's a, it's a, a Midwest. Right. Go back and the, right answer up. And, um, the, answer, the answer is honestly. Any <laughs> the answer is any <laughs> town USA. Flacco <laughs> is the best. Anytime. You both get a point. You both tie two to two. Congratulations. There, you guys are, you guys like your bourbons and your whiskeys and your rice. You're on the exact same page, so you guys are good sports. So, so there you have it, guys. There you have it. All right, guys. I'm going to load the wheel again. Uh, we are giving away a Lost Lantern full bottle of their. When did this guys come out? This is last year. Was it in the fall that the Still Austin single barrel from Lost Lantern it came summer. out? When was that? Uh, to the summer. Summer. This is the oh, summer collection. Wow. And nowhere to get it anymore, except not even our tasting room. Yes, it's, it's even here, sold so. out at our tasting room. So, so that so. is a uh, that is a very hard to find bottle nowadays. I, I, that's why I don't drink it much anymore. But uh, Andy, we're giving away a full. Are you sure you want to give away that full bottle? I don't have a choice. You put it up on Patreon. God dang it! Maybe I should have done that. Way to go. Well, we're giving it away now. It's okay. It's all right. It's great stuff. We like I to hate share Todd things so much. You don't. You love me. <laughs> all right. So why don't you wrap it up uh, while Andy? Why um load the wheel and uh what do we got coming up maybe you can uh give the last plug for tomorrow's release and what's maybe what's coming up guys it, uh, you'd have a spring does that mean there's a summer and fall collection that's kind of the, the what we have from lost lantern come each each year we so we do seasonal collections so we have spring now and then we'll have summer fall and winter coming still this year So is there a what the hell? All right. Um, of course it is, Todd. Vermont. <laughs> Vermont internet getting worse. That's us. Sorry. That's, that, that's Todd. That's, uh, Sorry, that's, I don't that's, know if it's us or you, but it might be. It might be Todd. He didn't pay his cricket bill. <laughs> it might be me, actually. I don't know what's um, going on here. We're getting a bad streamyard signal right now. But anyway, we didn't hear any of that. I don't know if the rest of the chat did. We had, we did not hear that. Thanks, Brian. Good show. All right, so we'll, we'll hear... try. We'll, so can you give us a sneak peek? Any, I didn't hear any of that. Did you hear no. that? No, I heard nothing of what you said, Nora. Oh, um, so. For the releases, so we have summer, fall, and winter coming up this year. And then summer, we're not going to say much, except it will be focused on one style of whiskey all, entirely. Mm -hmm. Okay. Hear that? One style of whiskey. Now, you could try to do the, uh, the, why don't you pull up, see if you can do the wheel real quick, Andy? Uh, sure thing, little fellow. And so, all right. So tomorrow at 12 p.m., guys, on Sealbacks. And your website. So if you go to your website, you ship to everywhere in the U. I mean, how's that work shipping wise? Is there any places you can't ship to? 
So between Sealbox and our website, we ship to 40 states. The best way to handle all of it is to go to our website and put your state in, and then we'll send you to the correct place to make sure that it ships to gotcha. your state. All right. Okay. And then on Sealbox, I think they ship to, I don't know, I, I, if it's similar to shared pool, it's everybody but Tennessee. And so you might want to just go to go to your website then and uh, order right directly from you. Um yeah, again, my favorite. So let, let me ask you guys this: Do you guys have a favorite in the collection? I know you're not, they're like all your kids, but I'm curious, Adam and Nora, what do you have a favorite or something? You know, come on, there's got to be one you like the most. I mean, this is mine. So far, flung rye. It is my baby, but it show it. Uh, it good, it good is call. midwestern oh. midwestern whiskey in a bottle. So if you want to learn about it, this is your guy. Can't go wrong with that. Adam put up the Cedar Ridge. Yeah, it's I love the Far Flung Ride because we blended it, but the Cedar Ridge wheat is so unique. Uh, there's there's nothing else like it, and I think it's really a beautiful, very pretty whiskey. There you go. Great. Wow. How exciting! I love that you guys come on. I really we really appreciate you guys coming on. We're gonna spin the wheel here in a second. See who wins that. Still Austin, uh, beautiful single barrel. Uh, coming up, so again, you have your releases throughout the year. Anything else? I think there was – Anthony wants to know. He still wants to know. You didn't say when is the best time to visit. You may, I assume the summer maybe? Maybe that's the best yeah. time? Is that the best time or no? So In terms anytime, of weather? Basically between June and October. That is your key time. Yeah. All right. There you go. Unless and it's Friday and Saturdays the right. tasting room is open, correct? And you guys are – there you go. And then you guys said Friday and Saturday. It, it, so um, you're where you're located. I remember we talked about the last time we had you guys on. Where if you if you went to the the biggest major city in Vermont, it would be what? And you're like thirty minutes away from that or south. I thought you mentioned how you're not far from the one of the bigger cities. Correct. It's it's all relative. Burlington is quite small, but that's the that's where anyone would fly into if they're flying. We're about half an hour south of that. There you go. There you go. All right, Andy, when are we getting up there? Uh, that, is that a, a real question about we, or when am I getting up there? We being 21090. Yes. You like to consider us a pair. Correct. Even though, yeah, I, I, I see that. Um, I yeah, think so, we have big things planned, right? Yeah, so so, <laughs> so we, uh, I, I think uh, it's very possible um, late uh, late spring, early Ooh, summer could be, there you uh, go. Could be a possibility. Love it. Love it. I do have some New England work, so I will... Give you guys a little call. Love there to, you go. Love to come All up right, let's bring this up. We want to get be mindful of their time. We've been on so so for long. Let's bring up that wheel, Andy. All right. So as you can see, Todd here in the space for the Moss Force Thanks set wheel. Thanks so much. Um, Appreciate it, guys. Thank you for the super chats. Why don't you shuffle that real quick? So Andy. Uh, I did shuffle it a couple times. I'll shuffle a few more. Um, let's see. All right. All right. Are you let's ready? Let's see who wins. He's still Austin. Uh, Lost Lantern still Austin. Summer. Well, there you go. You're you're, you're doing and the it. The winner is uh, Heart Sight. Or Anthony is Heartsight. Heartsight uh, wins again. I gotta well, another one. How about that? Heartsight, well done. Great bottle. Very cool. Yep. Great bottle. So let me pull that down. Stop screen there. All right. Yeah. So I can't thank you guys enough yes, again. I, I hope you all had fun with us tonight. Thank you for you know coming on. And we know you got a very busy day tomorrow uh, launching this, but. Again, my cheap plug is yes. Lost Lantern is just really damn good juice. Go find it. Uh, start exploring different distilleries you may not have heard of, different That's offerings, different it. finishes. Yes, I, I mean, keep up the good work, guys. You guys, yeah, thank are you guys for everything you do. you do. We love everything you're doing and keep it up. And cool people, we just yeah. like talking to you. So we we mm -hmm. we appreciate having you you guys on. Thank you for for hanging out with us again. And hopefully, it won't be the last time. Tomorrow night, guys. Yeah. Tomorrow tomorrow twelve p.m. Green collection. Yeah. Thank you again, and I, I'm looking forward to reading about the history of popcorn tonight. So I really appreciate uh, what I learned about the Midwest here. <laughs> there you go. Oh, yeah, you guys are good sports. All right, well, Adam and Nord, hang on one second. We should uh, close up the show. We just want to say one thing after the show to you guys. And uh, guys, next week we'll we'll have uh, some more. We'll have uh, some more uh, fun and uh, 
It's always a good it's time. It's always a good time. We, no, we, we appreciate have you dancing all. Go, we have Dancing Goat on next week, so that, that'll be all yeah, fun. There, there's another Wisconsin just to there you come go. on, so we, 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 we'll have a good time then. Uh, but uh, until then, let's see. For those of you who missed Todd's birthday. That's right. Oh, God, no. What are you doing? Let's sing happy birthday to Todd to get him what? out of here. No. Guys, uh, uh, yeah, it, was just, it was just a couple days Cheers, ago. guys. We'll see you next Tuesday. See you next week, guys. How about we do a happy birthday? Yeah. We do that? Happy birthday to you, happy birthday to you.